In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for another fr blessed Friday. It is 6 p.m. all the way from Sydney, Australia. For those who are with us in this Holy Church and those who are watching us through live streaming, we pray that you're always in good health and in good spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 115. Not unto us, O Lord, nor unto us, but to your name give glory, because of your mercy, because of your truth. Why should the Gentiles say, So where is their God? But our God is in, is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. Eyes they have, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Noses they have, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not handle. Feet they have, but they do not walk. Nor do they mutter through their throat. Those who make them are like them. So is everyone who trusts in them. O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. May the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth he has given to the children of men. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor any who go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. All glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, 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 a very good evening to everyone. How are we? We thank the Lord, we thank the Lord, the good old bishop is back again to Sydney. Yeah. Um, I pray that you've been well. Um, it's been, I don't know, maybe 10 days more or less since we've been uh, away to America. Uh, but I thank the Lord Jesus for um, uh, bringing us back in intact in one piece. Um, just very quickly. Uh, before we listen to a hymn. Actually, we might listen to a hymn first and then I'll come back. Okay, let's listen to this beautiful hymn. Gee. Amen to that. So, we thank the Lord that we're back. Um, I'm always hot. See, I said hot. I have switched to the American accent. There you go. Uh, we thank the Lord Jesus um, for this trip. Uh, it just came out of I never ever thought about it, I never ever anticipated it, but it just came out of nowhere and there was no, there was no intention of going to America this year at least, but it just happened to be and may the Lord's will be done in our lives all the time. Amen? Amen. So we went to Arizona, um, we had the Bible preach in Arizona, uh, we thank the Lord there was a very big turnout there. and. Um, it was absolutely amazing. I just want to thank all the organizers in Arizona, the people I stayed with, absolutely amazing, wonderful people, uh, very um, God-fearing people and um, very kind and hospitable. I, they are my family also in America. Uh, so they've done a magnificent job preparing for everything, organizing everything, and uh, everything went very, very smoothly. We thank the Lord. Uh, people came from all over America to Arizona from different states and um, we had a couple of interviews there and then there was another one done in um, Florida uh, with our beloved Patrick B. David. 
Um, so I, uh, I thank the Lord. Uh, a couple of more uh, young Assyrian men who interviewed us in Arizona, um, which I'm very proud of. Um, one is, uh, his name is Emmanuel, the other one, Brunel. Absolute wonderful Assyrian young men, very faithful, loving the Lord, and um, doing a magnificent work as well. So we are back. We thank the Lord Jesus. Um, I've missed you guys. I hope you have. Are you sure? Where is, um, is, is, there a, is, there, is there a virus going around or something? Is there? No? Thank God. It's not Corona, is it? Eh? Very good. Well, look, today I just came back from the airport this morning. Um, a long flight, uh, Phoenix, Arizona to LAX and then from LAX to, um, to, to Sydney. So I've been out 20, almost 20 hours, something like that with the transit. So I'm um, just with the jet lags and the time difference. So please do forgive me if I'm still not with it. But I pray it is the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit is going to take over as always. And this is just a vessel. But please do forgive me if I'm not sort of, um, if I'm a bit stumbling around uh, still in my jet lags. I didn't want to come today, but because I missed you so much, that's why I decided to come. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, man. I'm still in my American mood, you know, and the, and the, and, and the uh, you know, the floating with it. What's up, bro? What's up? Yeah, so um, I like that. Can I have some water? I said not water, it is water. This is the Aussie way, water. I, they said we like the Australian accent. I said, wow, that's amazing, good. So I, I, I gave him this statement. I had a bunny with me, boss, the other day. The little guy gave me the bullet. <laughs> I got no bread. I got to put the bite on you, mate. Let's put the bronze on the barbie. <laughs> Bush tucker. Meat pie, mate. Meat pie. <laughs> Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Yeah. Yes, that's the way. It's good to be back down under. True blue, mate. What a true blue this is, man. Well, don't judge the book by its cover, as they say. But I am an Aussie inside. Go Aussie. All right. Let's see what this question is. Today is Q&A. So if anybody wants to ask a question, you can ask. But whether I answer it or not, that's totally a different matter. <laughs> All right. What was the highlight of your USA trip, spiritually speaking? The highlight was when... The Bible preach we had in Phoenix, Arizona, there was a lot of people. The majority, again, was youth, young men and women. That is amazing. I mean, with all love and respect to the older generation, parents, mom and dads, and grandparents, God bless them all. It's everybody needs to hear the Word of God. Amen? Amen. But the, for me personally, to see young people in, of, of the 21st century, and especially in America where it's extremely easy to veer off. To be interested in the word of the Lord Jesus and coming from different states and different locations. To me that was an absolute fulfillment and enrichment for someone like me to see young men and women. So please put your hands together for our youth. They are the future of the church. I'm not, I cannot be here forever. I need to go, move on, and someone else needs to take my place. We need to have young men and women close to the church, close to the Lord Jesus, because you are the future. So this is my highlight. Also, every house we've been to, they've asked us to, uh, to go and visit them at their homes. We'd enter the house and there is, the house was packed with people. Again, majority young men and women. I remember this house, we sat for hours and we spoke for hours and I felt so, so bad that I've taken too much of their time. But they just said, don't stop. We just want to hear you speak. And they were all focused and a lot of questions being asked from those young men and women. Absolutely amazing. So that was the highlight of the trip. 
it was just incredible to see young men and women loving the Lord and interested in hearing more about the Lord Jesus. Amazing. Amazing. If God could punish people of Sodom and Gomorrah himself, why did he ask people of Israel to wipe out the people of Canaanites? Well, first of all, God has the right to choose how to bring his judgment on people, whichever way he uses. But at the end of the day, whether he does it himself or through other children of his, at the end, it is him who is bringing this judgment or punishment or his wrath on certain people that chose to live in a certain way. But let me tell you one thing about Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, it was not just people were living in sin, because if we speak about sin, everybody is a sinner. And therefore, we cannot judge in this, in this regard, because since we are all sinners, then who are we to judge someone else who is like us, a sinner like us? But Sodom and Gomorrah was a further step than sin, which was more so a crime in the, in the presence of the Almighty God. Because the people of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, did one thing which God cannot accept. They tried to change the identity of the human being. And that's what LGBTQ, RSTU, VYZX. That's what the LGBT is all about. You see, we've been asked this. I'm not here. Who am I to judge? If there is anyone who is a sinner, it is me, Bishop Murray. I am the greatest sinners of all. If St. Paul, if St. Paul, this pillar in the church of Christ, this mighty saint, this magnificent apostle of the Lord Jesus, if he says, and all the sinners whom I am the first of all, if St. Paul puts himself the number one sinner, then who, where do I go? I don't even, I'm not even worthy to get and kiss his sandals. I'm not even worthy. It's not about sin. If it was about sin, then we cannot say anything because we are all the same sinners. But this kind of a lifestyle in Sodom and Gomorrah, it was to change the human identity. God cannot tolerate this. And God will punish the country that embraces such lifestyle. When a country passes such laws, legalize such laws, they will be punished. I don't care which country that is, whether you are strong, superpower, mighty or small, doesn't matter. God will not tolerate. I can assure you. I can assure you. Every country that legalized such lifestyle, again, I'm not judged. I will pray for those who, who lived like Sodom and Gomorrah, the LGBT. Yeah, I'll pray for them. I love them. I'll pray for them. But I will never, ever, as a church, not an individual, as a church, as a church leader, I will never, ever accept such lifestyle. You can shred me to pieces. This is nothing personal. Please understand. It is nothing personal. I will pray for the LGBT. I will love the LGBT, but to accept them as it is normal over my dead body, period. What has happened of Christendom? Where are the church leaders? Today we are hearing church leaders are saying it's okay. We need to embrace this. We need to accept them. We need to tolerate them. We need to allow them to be part of the church in the name of love. Get a life. And repent before the Lord plugs you from your roots. So I'll tell you why God went himself to punish Sodom and Gomorrah. Because the moment you deny the human identity, God himself will punish you. Not anyone else. Because now it's got to do with God, not with humanity. 
Now he's not going to send another person, another human to go and punish Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? Because, because it's got to do with the human identity. Who created this human identity? Who gave this human identity? God. So when you try to wipe it, God himself will come. He's not going to send another human. No, he will come himself. So every country, listen, Australia, America, Canada, Europe, you better open your eyes, your ears and listen. Because you've embraced such laws, because you have accepted such laws, you will not escape the wrath of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, no matter what you do. And there is nowhere to hide from the Lord. You can run, but you cannot hide. Unbelievable. And let me be very clear, Sodom and Gomorrah, it is not only that lifestyle, which is today the same. Nothing is new under the sun. This has been going on for thousands of years, this LGBT. It's not something new. But Sodom and Gomorrah, since this question about Sodom and Gomorrah, it is not only a sin, it is more so a crime in the sight of God. So if someone comes out and says, it is a sin, but it's not a crime. <laughs> like unbelievable, man. It's a crime because you are wiping the identity of the human being, which God himself has created. God created man in his image, according to his likeness. And he created them male and female. God created them male and female. Everybody knows, regardless what your faith, your belief is, in the natural way, every human being knows they flourished, they multiplied, they increased because of a male and a female. Everybody knows this. We didn't come out of two females or out of two males. This is absurd. Naturally, it is unnatural. Naturally, it is unnatural. So when someone comes where God has made that person as a male and he says, I'm not, I'm a female, he has changed the identity which the very God has given him. Now this will make God himself angry and he will come himself and punish. Because it wasn't a human doings, it was God's doing, this human identity. And this human identity has got to do with his image and likeness. So now you're dealing with God himself. You are challenging God. Well, who do you expect to come and punish you? God. That's why God went to Sodom and Gomorrah. Do you understand? Okay. So when you come and change the very identity which God gave you, it's a crime, not only a sin. That's why the church cannot accept such thing. The Lord will never accept it. Period. But we need to pray for them. I'm not going to go and, and be against them or, or hurt them. No, no, I'll love you. I'll pray for you. But listen, my God does not tolerate such thing. He burned Sodom and Gomorrah to the ground. You cannot change what God has made. And if you try to change it, you're playing with fire and fire will burn you. And that's exactly what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. So please don't put it in other different colors. You guys are judging. You guys are discriminative. Just man. Go and have a fish burger and a chocolate sundae and get a life, man. The world has lost the plot. But what is more sad than all of this? The Christians have lost the plot. That is the saddest part of all. So-called churches embracing the six color rainbow. I will never call them churches. I don't give one penny who you are. Yes. And if I see you, you better not stand in my way because I'll bury you. What kind of Christian are you? No more real men. I don't know what happened. Can someone come and tell me what I mean? The Lord said it a long time ago. We, we've, been, we've been talking about the book of Revelation for quite some time and God willing we'll come back next year <laughs> to complete it. 
read the last, the last stage of the church, Laodicea. The rebellious church. The Lord said it 2,000 years ago. He said, my church in the end of times will deny me. We are witnessing this before very our own eyes. Today, any church leader, any clergyman that speaks the truth is being silenced, is being persecuted, is being deposed from the church. For speaking the truth, they are being deposed by their hierarchies. Wow. Well done, popes. Well done. What has become? The Lord, He knew. In the end of times, the church will walk away. That's why the church is in turmoil. It's very weak. So yeah. God will come Himself when you try to change your identity. He will come Himself. And if Australia doesn't repent, they will cop it. You know, it's funny. This country says, if this other country looks after me, I'll be okay, I'll be safe. So they are seeking human shield. They are seeking human security and safety net. But let me tell you one thing. No matter which other superpower you are seeking to come and help you, no one can come to your rescue if, unless Jesus is your Lord and Savior. No one. It is the Lord who protects. It is the Lord who builds. It is the Lord who fortifies. It is the Lord. If you walk away from the Lord, you can have the most powerful nation with you. You are going to the pit. You are going to the pit. It is God. It is God who protects my beloveds. No one else. It is God, my beloveds. So yeah, this is why God himself went to Sodom and Gomorrah. You've changed my identity now. <laughs> You're playing with fire. Yeah. But I pray for them. I pray for all of them. Please, get it through your heads. Don't falsify the truth. Don't try, anyway. Because you cannot falsify the truth. Is it a sin to hang out with worldly people even when you know you won't sin? How do you know that? What guarantees do you have that you're not going to sin if you hang around with worldly people? What, 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 what? What guarantee do you have, brother? What, 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 what guarantee? What, what, uh? There is no guarantee, my dear son, my dear daughter. Let me tell you this. If the weather outside is cold, can you change it? If the weather outside like today is hot or hot, can you change it? No. You put yourself in an environment you will be affected by that environment whether you like it or not. No matter how smart, how wise, and how strong you are. You mix with the negative vibes, it will affect you. Sooner or later, it will. Maybe today you went out and you came back and said, Yes, I didn't make a mistake. They drank alcohol. I drank 7-Up. They puffed whatever. I didn't smoke. But let me see you, bro. After a week, after a month, after a year, you'll be the master of all yourself. They swore I was nice. And after one year, he is the teacher of foul language. He opened the classroom. No guarantees. The Holy Bible says, bad friends, Bad friends ruin good morals. Bad friends ruin good morals. Because practice makes perfect. The more you go, the more you're going to end up being like them. So why do you need to hang around with worldly people? 
let me define what a true friend is. Let me define who is this true friend for you, my dear friend. In a, in a very simple approach, a true friend is the one who builds you up, not destroys you. A true friend is the one who builds you up, not destroys you. And the only way, the only way for this friend to build you up is for this friend to be the reason for you going to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If this friend takes you to the Lord, then call him a friend. But if this friend takes you to Satan, he is not your friend. So you need to know what is the true definition of a friend. A true friend who takes you uptown, not downtown. Takes you to the church, not to the club. Takes you to the light, not to the darkness. A friend that shows you the way of the Lord Jesus, not Satan. So, please, stay away from those so-called friends because they are not friends. They are not. Pray for them, but stay away from them. How do you know if you are getting tempted a lot by Satan? Oh, yeah, you'll definitely know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Lord Jesus said it very clear every tree is known by its fruits you can tell the tree from its fruits Satan has his fruits and the Lord Jesus has his fruit has his fruits and they are both very clear like the daylight so when you look at Satan, definitely you will know what kind of a fruits they are coming from him. Lies, killing, stealing, smelling, huffing and puffing. You can tell. And then when you're tempted, you just use the word tempted. See, the, so the word tempted definitely comes from Satan did you know God does not tempt you yeah. look um, the more accurate and the and the Lord's Prayer is there are two things one is called exam the other called trial trials come from Satan exams come from God the Lord Jesus the Lord Jesus will never Put you through a trial he will put you through exams but satan will only put you through trials why because trials are put there to make the human fall trials are for the fall of the human race exams are put there to give the human being the chance to pass and succeed you see no doctor and we have a great doctor here with us. No doctor ever became a doctor unless he or she went through exams, not trials. Exams. Unless you sit through an exam, you can never say, I made it. So the exam there is to help you succeed, prosper, and graduate to receive your certificate and say, I'm a doctor now. How was this made possible? Through exams. So the Lord will examine you in order to give you the opportunity to pass, elevate, exalt, and prosper. Satan will put you through trials. The trials are there to do one thing, to break you and to make you fall and disappear. So the temptations are the trials. The temptations are the trials. So what are the temptations of Satan? Star City Casino, gambling, alcohol, boys and girls, girls and boys, hmm? going out against your parents' wish. They say to you, don't go out, don't be late. You break every law, you break every rule. It's extremely clear. You are walking in the wrong path. You need to come out. You need to come out and ask the Lord for forgiveness. Ask the Lord for guidance. Ask the Lord 
to bring you back because the temptations of the world are plentiful plentiful my beloveds be extremely cautious extremely careful be very careful what happens and how do you feel when you're uh, getting attacked by Satan I don't know is this uh, for me or is this for you uh, what happens when you get attacked by Satan uh, the feeling is very ugly um, there is a lot of confusion there is a lot of um, uh, unrest there is a lot of um, heavy burden so it's a, it's a very very chaotic very chaotic situation when the enemy attacks you need to run to the Lord Jesus and say say a prayer say the our father um, go and kneel open the Holy Bible and start reading the Holy Bible start memorizing some biblical verses so when the attack comes maybe you may not have the Holy Bible on you at least memorize some biblical verses so you can recite them while you are being attacked right there and then the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want I think it's the same person how do you know if you're getting tested by God what is this man how do you know if you're getting tested by God let me put it in a very simple way because this is very deep tested by God Saturday evening something inside of you says to you tomorrow is Sunday you need to go to church and then another voice says don't go but this voice says go to church and then you feel lethargic you feel tired all of a sudden uh, all all hell broke loose headaches migraines my back is falling apart my knees are shaking I don't know oh man I can't uh, maybe next Sunday not this Sunday please God leave me alone oh he's testing you when you hear the voice saying to you go to church that is the voice of the Lord you better pack yourself up and run whether it's hot whether it's not whether it's raining whether you are feeling good you are feeling miserable whether whatever feelings you have following Christ is not based on feelings is based on faith faith because feelings my beloved human feelings will never be stable one day I'm up there the next I'm down there it's like a roller coaster ride one morning you wake up you're on top of the world the next day you wake up you're feeling so down and miserable and you don't know what happened how can you follow the Lord with feelings it's like a yo-yo you need to walk with in faith faith is steady so what is faith whether I feel like going to church or not beside the point I'm going whether I'm tired or not I'm going whether I have the time or not I'm going I will force myself to go to church even if there is a lot of challenges in my way I will go and you know what when you come to go to the church before going somebody pops up and ruins it for you you were getting ready looking forward to it and one of the family members comes and gets on your nerve and you and then you start arguing after that before you know it it's world war three ruined the day and then you said i'm not going no you go to church and ask the lord for forgiveness for making that making the, uh, making you angry say lord i shouldn't have been angry but i'm coming to the church amen, amen. i was tired i didn't want to come today Maybe later. Is listening to secular music a sin? I want to dance with somebody. Yeah. Avoid Hollywood completely. My beloved sons and daughters, 
the younger generation especially, the youth. Are you a teenager? You're in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s? Why are you listening to music that comes out of Hollywood? What are you gaining out of it? This guy is a rapper. This guy is I don't know what. Do you know Hollywood is actually controlled by the Illuminati's? It's absolute satanic. Let me tell you, my, my beloved sons and daughters, the young generation, the youth, the teenagers, especially. Some guy comes from America, or he is a rapper, or he's a famous a celebrity. The whole world goes and they pay big money just to see and watch nonsense, evilness. Hollywood was established for one thing, to brainwash humanity and take it away from God. Believe me, believe me, believe me. It was made for one reason, to brainwash millions upon millions upon millions of young men and women and take them away from the true divine God because you have no idea. Music, my beloved, entertainment comes and enters through the back door of your imagination. I've spoken about this before, but please, since I've mentioned it, let me talk a little bit about it. This is in the book of Revelation. Music, when you listen to it, when you choose to listen to it, you have no control anymore. Please. It's a form of hypnosis. Did you know this? It's a form of hypnosis. Hypnosis affects the subconscious mind. Us humans have no control over the subconscious mind. We can only try to fix the rational conscience mind. The subconscious will control us. When you allow this kind of a rhythm, let me tell you about Hollywood. Even the drum beat, the beat is done sometimes in a particular way. It's a ritual thing. It's an evil, evil, evil thing. It's a hypnotic way to the, rush, to the subconscious mind of the human being. When that music enters through the door of imagination, now listen, my beloveds, imagination is a beautiful gift from the good God. It's a good gift from the good God. All of us, we imagine. Through our imagination, we can go to heaven. We can go anywhere we want to go with imagination. There is no limit. God imagines since he created us in his image, whatever he is and has, he has placed in this human being. This imagination, when it gets tarnished, it will affect your subconscious mind. It will shape, mold, and form your subconscious mind. And guess what? Before you know it, since you have no control over the subconscious mind, the moment it is shaped and affected, the subconscious mind will send it to the conscience, the rational mind. When it gets to your rational mind, you're gone. You're gone. You see millions listening to this, and they're all jumping. What are you, like a piston in this engine, car engine going up and down? What are you? What are you jumping for? What are you doing? What are you doing? If you want to listen to a song, listen to a song that has the name of Jesus Christ in it. To cleanse your way of thinking, to purify your imagination, 
because when the name of Jesus enters through the door of imagination, it purifies your imagination. Guess what? Imagination is the way for you ending up worshiping God or Satan. Did you know this? It is the imagination that will take me later on onto faith and then worshiping God. But if the imagination is not pure, I will veer off and go to the dark side. Satan will take over. Satan will take over. So we need to purify this imagination. How do we do it? Only God can. I need to be clinging to the word of the Lord. Listen to songs, make them, make them songs that are about, about the Lord, praising God, something that is pure. Some of the lyrics of these rap thing, like foul language, filth, filth, he is swearing. And you call this a song? Do you know, do you know who taught the human race how to swear? Satan. What do you think you got it out of out of the thin air? No, you didn't learn it yourself. It wasn't your friend. Satan taught people how to swear. Do you want to know what Satan does? He is the one, the master of swear words. He swore against Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Swear words came from Satan, no one else. He is the source. So when somebody uses swear words, he is speaking the language of Satan. It's not you. <laughs> it's not your whatever, friend, cousin. No, 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 no. All of you learn from Satan. The Lord. So holy, so pure, so clean, so exalted and elevated. Blessed are you, always praising, always there is morals. And this is what I want to say to my beloved Muslim world. They got upset with me in that interview with Patrick but David. That's okay, you can get upset, it's fine. Everybody's free. But let me tell you one thing, my beloved Muslim brother and sister in humanity. I love you and I will always love you. I pray for you and I will always continue to pray for you whether you like me, hate me, accept me or reject me. Beside the point, you know why? Because my sweetheart, Jesus Christ of Nazareth always taught me to love everyone and to pray for everyone, period. But let me tell you, the question that was asked in that interview with Patrick with David and all our love and regards to our beloved Patrick. We love you and may the Lord always guide you in, in, in the truth. May the Lord always guide you in the truth. Let me tell you one thing. I'm not here to debate whether your faith is right or wrong. I'm not here to say this or that, but I will say one thing. To you, my beloved Muslim, and to every other religion in this world, not just you, to every other religion in the world, you bring your leader and I will ask and beg my leader to come and compare your leader to my sweetheart, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and let me say what you're going to say. It's not about you as a Muslim. It's about your leader. When you compare your leader, whether it's Muhammad, whether it's Buddha, whether it's Krishna, whether it's whoever it is, with all love and respect, I'm saying this. When you compare him to Jesus Christ, there is no comparison. Whether you accept him as a prophet, totally different, this prophet. <laughs> even in your book, even in your book, he is totally different. 
He is the only prophet according to your faith, my beloved Muslim. He is the only prophet that is referred to as the word of God. And the spirit of God. No other prophet, no Moses, no Isaiah, no Ezekiel, none of the prophets ever was mentioned of that they are the word of God. Except Isa, except Isos. And by the way, like the Isa and the Quran is not the Jesus of the Bible. Totally different. Not, nothing to do. Nothing. Two, totally two different people. Sorry, like that's the truth. And if the truth hurts, I'm really sorry, but I'm not. So why? Question yourself. Why is this person, if he is a prophet only, why is he the only prophet out of the entire Old Testament prophets, why is this prophet being referred to as the word of God and the spirit of God? How come the others didn't get this kind of a title? How come this prophet, the only prophet out of all, the only one who was born in a virginal birth? He has only earthly mother, no earthly father. These are questions you need to seek the answer to. But compare the life of Christ to the life of every other religious figure out there with all love and respect. Christ, I can't compare him to none of them. And let me tell you this with love. I love the Muslim. I love the Buddhist. I love the Hindus. I love all of you. But one day we are going to face this one true divine God, whether he rewards us or judge us, it is up to him. And I'm telling you, not because I have the cross around my neck, not because I have this outfit on me, not because I've read the Holy Bible, not because I am referred to as a Christian, but because I know Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Please, I know this man. I know this man. He took me to heaven. I didn't see Muhammad. I didn't see Buddha. I didn't see Krishna. It is Jesus. Why? Because he is the only true God who was revealed in the flesh over 2000 years ago. He is the way to heaven. He is heaven. He is the rightful owner. He is God revealed in the flesh. Nothing to do with Christians, nothing to do with Muslims, nothing to do with Buddhists. Atheist, you name it, nothing. It's got to do with the true divine God. For this, I'll die any minute. And I will always love you, even if you come and chop my head off, I love you. I'm not here to fight you. I'm not here to go against you and offend you. I'm just speaking the truth. It is Jesus, no one else. It is Jesus, no one else. And by the way, what are the Christians? What are the Christians? I want to know. What happened to the Christians? Just because you are born in a Christian family and you're baptized, you think this is it? No, you need to come and live the Lord. Not just be with him. You need to live him. You know why? Because he is your source of life. He is the source of life. You need to live Christ. You need to get to know Christ. Just because you're a Christian, that is not enough. It is good, but not good enough. Unless you come into a personal relationship, unless you come into the encounter with the Lord Jesus, you need to make him your holy companion. Unless you live with the Lord, Unless you live the Lord, you'll never know the Lord. You'll never know Him. You can go to church a million zillion times. If you do it as an obligation, as a duty, you'll end up where you were like the Israelites going in circle in the wilderness and they died in the wilderness. You need to come out of that wilderness and live Christ. Live Him. Jesus is totally different. And this is what I was going to say. You compare the Lord Jesus, far from him, to any religious figure. Let me come. 
Let me look at all the religions in the world and with their leaders. Muhammad, Buddha, Krishna, all the leaders of the world, you know, religions in the world, all of them. The, let's assume, let's assume this for a moment. The ultimate, the ultimate, these leaders could have done to humanity is the ultimate is one thing. Change a bad person into a good person. Let's say they brought some good values and morals and ethics and principles of life. The ultimate they could have done a favor to the human race was one thing. Change a bad person into a good person. The love of my life, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, did not come to change a bad person into a good person. He came to change a dead person into a living one. In this, there is no comparison. It is only Jesus Christ of Nazareth as a human being on the face of this earth. He is the only human who dared to claim this statement and this truth. He said, he who hears my word and believeth in my word, even if he dies, he shall live. But he who takes my body and drinks my blood will live in me forever. I am the life and the resurrection. All the, all the religious leaders, what do they say? We are alive, not the life. Only Jesus said, I am the life, the light of the world. I am that I am, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Who could say this? So when you look at the historical Jesus Christ of Nazareth, when you look at the witnesses, the eyewitnesses, the eyewitnesses who lived with him for three years and four months and documented everything they saw, everything they heard before the crucifixion and after the resurrection. They saw him. They documented it. Isn't that a valid a valid eyewitness testimony. You want me to believe in someone who came in 635 AD and their book was written 200 years after the prophet's coming. You want me to believe in that and wipe away eyewitness doc being, you know, accounts, eyewitness accounts documented. Believe me. Heaven is amazing. Hell is hell. Heaven is beautiful. But I can assure you, again I'll say this, out of love and respect, it is not my job to debate. That's not, the Lord didn't send me for this. The Lord sent me to do one thing. Be that voice in this wilderness of this world. But let me tell you one thing. I will put my life on the line on what I'm saying now. I will never walk away, never change. Nothing will change me. When you go to heaven, I pray that all of you make it. You will only find Jesus Christ there, the way to heaven. And he is heaven. When you look at him, see the stunning. When you look at Jesus, he is heaven. He is the reason why heaven is beautiful. He is the reason why that place exists. It is Jesus. This truth has got nothing to do with you Christians. <laughs> nothing to do with you Muslims. Nothing to do with you Buddhists, atheists, Hindus, Shintos. I don't know whatever religion is there. Nothing to do with that. It's got to do with the truth. I saw that. I lived that. And I saw hell as well. I can tell you about Satan, but not the time now. It's Jesus. Habibi. I will eat tabbouleh with him, Baba Ghanoush, anytime, all time, and we'll have a bush tucker night together. He's an Aussie, and what a beautiful Aussie he is. It's the Lord. For the Lord's sake, it's the Lord. 
Jesus is God revealed in the flesh. I'm not here talking about whether you're a Christian or a Muslim. Oh, that's, that's not my job. God is the judge. But I'm just saying what, I, what the Lord showed me. That's all. So you want to be upset with me? It's fine. I'm not going to change what I'm saying. For God's sake, because that's what I saw. If I saw someone else in heaven, I would have told you. It's only Jesus. Believe me. Up to you, Habib Albi. You want to believe it, not up to you. Sooner or later, all of us, we're going to die. We will, you'll find out, brother. <laughs> believe me, you'll find out. Not now, another 10 years, I pray the Lord gives you a long life. Another 50 years, you will go, I will go, all of us will go one day. God bless you and give you a long life. When we go, the Lord will remind you of this moment. He will say to everyone, that good old looking bishop, do you think he was speaking? No, it was me, the Lord. Do you think he was shouting? No, it was me, the Lord. The bishop is nothing. He is a piece of dust. He can't help himself, let alone help someone else. Wake up, people. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. Jesus. I want to dance with this body. Yeah, yeah. I want to feel the heat with this body. It's the Lord, my beloved. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. What is your favorite Bible verse? 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Love never fails. Love never fails. I love it. 1 Corinthians 13, 8. I always, that always comes to my mind every time I want to think of something. Always. Love never fails. If we can live this verse, the heaven of all heavens is yours. If you live just one verse, look how many millions of chances the Lord has given you and given us. One verse out of hundreds of thousands of verses. He says, if you can live this, if you can believe in this, trust this and live this verse, love never fails. Okay, people love you, people hate you. Remember, love never fails. Stay loving them because love never fails. Why? Because God is love. And when God is with you, then who can be against you? And even if they go against you, like they did a few days ago, and even if they don't go against you, doesn't matter. The Lord is with you. They can do whatever. At the end, all of us will have to answer back to the Lord Jesus. It's very sad. We need to focus on Christ. Focus on Christ. Um, I'll leave that for later. What time is it? Oh, it's seven o'clock. One hour is gone. I don't know. I'm thinking of a joke, but I've run out of jokes. Can you please send me some? But uh, um, what do you call them? Uh, that P PG? Where is it PG? Huh? Huh? G-rated, general, not PG. Parent, ah, parental guidance, yeah? No, 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 I don't want parental guidance. I want just G, okay? So send me a very nice, very clean joke. If you send me naughty joke, I come you, I, 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 I you. Red belt in karate, brother, I'll come and chop you. Oh, so sorry, man. <laughs> I don't know if I should read this question <laughs> aloud, but I'll read it. It's funny. I like it. No, it's not funny, but I like it. Am I doing the wrong thing if I attend the RSL club <laughs> with my family for a Christmas lunch? Go for it, brother. <laughs> Go the RSL. Well done, brother. <laughs> Lest we forget. <laughs> Actually... Speaking of lest we forget, now these are the Aussies that you are proud of. Yeah? Please put your hands together for those Aussies. Real Aussies who died for dignity, for freedom, 
and for humanity. Now that's an Aussie, not these puppets of our days and age. No, these are puppets. Not all of them, but those who are in big places, they're puppets. Um, so yeah, is it a sin? Am I doing the wrong thing if I attend the RSL club? He, he didn't say which RSL club. <laughs> Uh, please, later on, let me know so I can uh, attend it with you as well, please. <laughs> for a lunch with my family, for a Christmas lunch. Uh, that's a, now it's a very hard question. Why do I read it aloud? <laughs> um, <sighs> it's a sensitive area. Uh, look, it's a family gathering. It's Christmas time. Look, unfortunately, uh, we need to say this, um, we're living in a, in a part of the world where this is the reality of it. It's very sad, the Western world doesn't have a lot of places for families together unless it's a restaurant or a club. I don't know, they should, they should open more garden areas, uh, sitting areas. I don't know, in the Middle East, you can see families walking on the, on the footpath, there's a garden over there cars going and coming and people sitting over there and over they should make it more sociable so anyway look it's christmas time it's a family gathering you don't want to ruin it as long as we go to the restaurant side yeah where, where are you which one is it? okay so as long as you go to the restaurant don't look <laughs> you know just like those uh, racing horses they put those things around their eyes so they just see, look straight so so just walk like this. Anybody says hello to you, say uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Can you look to the right? No, sorry. Why? Because the good old bishop told me not to look. <laughs> That's okay. You can go with the family, enjoy it, don't ruin it. It's Christmas time. You, you, you're going for lunch. It's a Christmas lunch with the family. So go and have a beautiful lunch. Enjoy the moment with the family and ask the Lord Jesus to close the club later on. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's all right. You can have lunch there, but um, don't go there again. <laughs> all right. In the book of Exodus, why did God harden Pharaoh's heart? Because it is mentioned that God hardened Pharaoh's heart so he would not listen to Moses. Okay, you see, that's a good question. I like that. God did not harden Pharaoh's heart in the sense of God did it deliberately. No. But God, being God, He knows every heart. He knows who is going to open up to His voice and who is not. God saw that before the event taking place. Because for God, past, present, future, are all present before his holy eyes he knows what will happen before it happens god looked before that situation took place he looked at pharaoh's heart knew pharaoh will not believe so the disbelief of pharaoh made his heart hard so it's not god that hardened Pharaoh's heart to say to go against Moses. No, but God knew Pharaoh will not open up to the voice of God. So every human being, when the Lord sends his message through someone or whatever situation it is, he's sending his voice to all of us. When we hear his voice, the Bible says, do not harden your heart when you hear his voice. Revelation 320, uh, 3.20 I am standing outside and knocking at the door. He who hears my voice and opens the door, I will enter and dine I with him and he with me. But if you don't hear his voice and open the door, what will happen to you? Your heart will go like a rock. It will be hard because you didn't open the door. God sent his voice through Moses. God knocked at the door of Pharaoh's heart like the way he knocked at the door of Moses' heart and everyone else. 
those who open the door to the voice of the Lord Jesus they will be delivered but those who shut the door in his in his way their hearts will turn into a rock they will perish like Pharaoh did so what hardened Pharaoh's heart he didn't open the door to the voice of God it's not God it's us yes very good uh, I may read it actually is there a particular reason why the Catholic Church does not teach the Word of God in depth now the only reason why I chose to read this question because I would like to say the following I want you to hear this please there are some absolutely wonderful Christian Catholic beloved brothers and sisters in Christ there are some wonderful still leaders there are some wonderful priests there are some wonderful monks and nuns and there are some wonderful even faithfuls laity have no rank in the church but they are christian catholics believing in the lord loving the lord and they are absolutely magnificent and wonderful so maybe you and i have not come across someone maybe that is not teaching the word of god in depth but i can assure you there are and there are plenty of them but we need to pray for the church as a whole for christendom for the holy apostolic universal church as a whole whether it's catholic orthodox and whatever branch it is for the lord jesus to always be the head of the church no one else no one else the moment I become the head of the church we lose the depth of the Word of God but if we leave the Lord to be the head always there will always be depth to his word because then the Holy Spirit will talk through those church leaders let me say this to you the Holy Spirit please pay attention the Holy Spirit will only work in full force when that person when that person in whom the holy spirit is dwelling when that person loves jesus christ of nazareth from the heart that is the only time the holy spirit will speak with fire engulfs everything in its in, 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 in his path when that person when that human being whether he is the pope cardinal bishop priest whoever a faithful when that person loves the Lord Jesus from the heart the Holy Spirit will work in that person because the Holy Spirit is the ambassador of the King of Kings the Holy Spirit came to teach us about Jesus he talks about Jesus his whole mission and work is about Jesus Christ of Nazareth you love the Lord Jesus the Holy Spirit will work and will love you and when the Holy Spirit works in you he will open your eyes to see the Son Jesus Christ of Nazareth and when you see the Son through the Son you will see the Father and when you see the Father then you'll begin to love God when you love God you have eternal life because this is the eternal life that they may know you that you are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent so how do we gain eternal life by knowing God and Jesus Christ when you get to know God and Jesus Christ you get to love them how did you get to know Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit who gave you the Holy Spirit Jesus Christ by shedding his blood blood on Calvary gave you the sacrament of baptism to be born again from above not from below a new birth so when the lord gave you baptism you were born again in heaven a heavenly birth not an earthly one the holy spirit dwelt in you for one reason to open your eyes to the son jesus christ 
when he opened your eyes to the sun, when you saw the sun, the Lord says, he who sees me sees the father. When we saw the son, we saw the father. When I came to know the father through the son, I came to love them because millions of times we've mentioned this. What leads to love is knowledge. You cannot love someone you do not know. You can only love the one you know. So you need to know them in order to love them. But when you love them, it is through love and love only. Life eternal is made possible. Yeah. So is there beautiful Christian Catholic people? 100%. Just because one person here and one person there comes and does things against the Lord, that doesn't mean the church is, is not holy. The ultimate solution for the church to be united, we need to go back to the Nicene Creed. We need to go back to the church fathers. Stop using your heads, for God's sake. Go back to the Nicene Creed. All churches, all Christian factions believe in the Nicene Creed. Go back and embrace that and embrace the church father's teachings. You can't go wrong. There's no problems. Whether you are Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, I don't know. Yeah. Unbelievable. Sometimes when I have the time, maybe I, I watch a few things. Sometimes I see some Christian Catholics, priests, sometimes they're bishops, they talk. I listen. And then I, and then I say, wow. You could tell this person loves the Lord. It's very simple. I remember this priest one day was talking. Man, he drew my attention. And he was talking in depth. Absolutely magnificent. Because he, 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 got, he got focused on the word. Didn't veer off. See, when you focus on the word, it's powerful. Because in the word there is power. He spoke absolutely magnificent. Magnificent. Uh, one day, that uh, doesn't matter. Yeah. But there are, there are, my beloveds. There are. Um, we need to focus more on the Lord Jesus. This is the dilemma of the church. In general, whether it's Catholic, Orthodox, doesn't matter. The focus needs to be increased more and more on Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, I don't understand this question. Are my family members included in my household being saved even though they don't live with me? Are my family members included, uh, included in my household being saved even though they don't live with me? Uh, whether they live with you or not, they need to live with the Lord Jesus to be saved. So, um, are they close to the Lord Jesus, your family members? Uh, I don't know if I understood your question or not, and if I haven't, please forgive me uh, for my ignorance. But the only way for any one of us, whether we are a family or individual, the only way for us to be saved, we need to be close to the Lord Jesus, period. So whether we live together or not, we need to live together with the Lord. We need to live together with the Lord Jesus. Last question. I took four. What time is it? Oh, it's 7.18. Can priests be married after being ordained? Not in every church. There are some churches. They will force you to get married before they ordain you a priest. Our beloved Coptic church, for example, the Coptic church, if you want to get married and you live in the world, not in a monastery, yes? If you don't live in a monastery, you just live in the world like other people and you, wanna, you have the desire to become a priest, then they'll say to you, go and get married first, then we will ordain you a priest. 
But if you are in a monastic life as a monk, of course, those monks, they cannot get married. So it is from the monastery, they choose priests, bishops, archbishops, and popes. Only from the monastery. But if you're living in the world with your parents, wherever, and you have that heart desire to be a priest, the church will say to you, first you get married, then we will ordain you. And I just remembered one of the priests who passed away in a recent time, a recent saint from the Coptic church, our beloved Coptic Orthodox. By the way, I'm not Coptic. Okay, so just because I mentioned this very seriously. If I talk about the Catholic, you say, oh, he's Catholic, but he doesn't look it. And if I talk about the Orthodox, oh, he's Orthodox. I am Orthodox. Yes, and I'm a proud Orthodox. But more so, I'm a Christian Orthodox. Yes, Orthodoxy does not save me. Christ does. Now, but I love Orthodoxy because it's very stable. It's been stable for 2,000 years. Uh, that's what I love about Orthodoxy. Very stable. But anyway, this priest, his name is Bishoy Kamel. He's a saint. Bishoy Kamel. He wanted to be a priest badly. He was living in the world. He was not a monk. <clears throat> so he needs to get married. He doesn't want to get married. He doesn't, he, like, kill him and say, don't get, and, and say married. He, he does not. He'd rather be killed and not get married. It's not in his, in his heart. He begged the Lord Jesus, like, can you make an exception, please? Yeah, I need. <laughs> Do something, Lord. It's a church rule. That's it. So anyway, he prayed. He said, Lord, please bring me a girl that I'll go up to and I'll say to her, will you marry me? But we will live separate life. He said, one day I went to this place. I looked and my eyes fell on this girl and I walked up to her. He, he doesn't know her. He said, um, will you marry me? But one thing, um, I stay single, you stay single. She said, I've been asking the Lord and I've been begging him that I don't want to get married, but they are forcing me. My parents forcing me to get married, but I don't want to get married. And I was begging the Lord, Lord, send me a man that will say, I'll marry you, but I'll never touch you as a wife and a husband. She said, yes. They were married for so many years. He never knew her ever. She still lives. He moved on. Abu Nabi Shah Kamil, look at his history. Stunning saint. The Holy Mother appeared to him so many times. He did, he did wonders and miracles in, while on earth and still now, after his departure. His wife came out on TV. She spoke and told all the secrets after him moving on. She's still a virgin. She's an old woman now. I don't know, maybe in her 70s. I'm not sure. Now that's what you call a saint. Living together and still lived as a monk. And she lived as a nun. Wow, what a, what a strong will, what a strong will. So yeah, um, in the church I belong to, there are exceptions. We will allow someone who is already married. Uh, if, if we ordain a priest and then they want to get married, there are exceptions. We will allow it. If, if he's, he's a priest and then he chooses to get married, it's, it's case by case, but it's, it's permissible. But the best thing, get married, then be a priest. So when somebody walks up to us and says, I want to be a priest, I say, okay, we'll, we'll test you. But sometimes you could tell, like it's the Holy Spirit, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't explain it. Sometimes you look at the face and you say, no, no, yeah, it's all right. But someone, no, no, you, you wait. You need to wait.
the glorified body. This question is about the glorified body. The glorified body is, given, is going to be given by the Lord Jesus on His second coming, which is that body that He rose with from the dead. That's a spiritual three-dimensional body. So, for example, how you look, how you look, how you look, how you look, it's exactly this is the way you're going you're gonna to be uh, raised from, uh, from the dead or at the end or in the second coming. So the way you are now, three-dimensional, you'll rise, but in a spiritual three-dimensional body. However, you'll have the height of the Lord Jesus and the age of the Lord Jesus. Everyone will rise 33 and his height. So if somebody came to this world and lived an hour, so this is a comfort for those mom and dads who lost their baby while maybe the baby was in the womb. Maybe the baby was born and after an hour passed away or after a week or two weeks. Let me assure you, those who lived 969 years of the Old Testament and those who came and were, were lived in the mother's womb and died in the mother's womb and those who were born and died an hour after birth, all will rise at the age of 33, the height of Jesus Christ forever and ever. We will be Christ-like. St. John says this in his epistle. Read the epistle of St. John. We will be Christ-like. However, the only difference between the Lord Jesus' glorified body and the glorified body that he gives us, his glorified body will have the wounds on it. You will see holes in his hand, in his feet. You will see them. Those those wounds will remain on his glorified body forever forever he carried that to remind those who will be with him forever the only reason why you are with me and my father's house forever it is my wounds that brought you here this is a reminder what true love is all about I laid my life for the ones I love. My wounds brought me, brought you into the, into the Father's house. So that will be a reminder for all of us for what the Lord has done for every single one. Why does God allow Satan to exist? In a nutshell, because I'm a greater enemy to myself than Satan. If there, who is your worst enemy? You. This is why God did not abolish Satan. If God were to abolish Satan, he, he would have abolished us before Satan. <laughs> because I am my worst enemy. I am my worst enemy. About Satan, the Lord Jesus said this very quickly. He said, do not fear the one who can kill the body but has no authority over the spirit. But I tell you who you should fear. Fear the one who kills the body and then has the authority to throw your spirit in hell. Who kills the body but has no authority over the spirit? Satan. Who kills the body and throws the spirit in hell? Me and you. <laughs> we are our worst enemy. The word me. Mwa, 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 mwa. That's the worst thing. Out of me came all sins. I destroyed everything because of me. If, it, if me was not in existence, I would have been beautiful. Still living in paradise. No problem. Can you please explain why tattoos are a sin? Because the Holy Bible says so. Read that in the book of um, Leviticus. But I won't tell you which chapter so you can read the whole entire book. <laughs> I like that. It's in Leviticus, so read it. Tattoos are a sin. And actually the word tattoo is mentioned in the Holy Bible. Tattoo. You cannot do. Oh, you can. Huh? That rhymes. Tattoo. You cannot do. Tattoo. What's up? cannot do well uh, forget about Hollywood okay um, reason being this body is a copyright of God you cannot modify something that is a copyright you need to ask the permission of the author when you go to the author he will say no <laughs> if you have a tattoo already don't panic all right <laughs> I'll have to mention this otherwise you're gonna say oh, oh what are we what are we gonna do if you have a tattoo and you cannot remove it, or it's going to be very hard to remove, just ask the Lord for forgiveness. You need to ask Him. I'm sorry, Lord. I was uh, still very young. I, I didn't know. Whatever reason. But you be honest. 
If you knew it was wrong and you did it, you better tell the Lord as it is. Don't go and say, oh, I'm really sorry. I didn't know. Don't lie. You, he knows. So if you knew it was wrong and you insisted on doing it, go to the Lord and say, Lord, I am a stubborn person. They told me it's wrong and I didn't listen and I did it. So I'm confessing. I knew it was wrong and I did it and I'm sorry for doing it, Lord. I won't put any more on my body. Don't increase. If you cannot wipe it, if you can wipe it, wipe it. If you cannot wipe it, it's too much. Don't add any more. And to the Christians, why are you putting the Lord Jesus on your muscle or the Holy Mother or a rosary? What is this, man? Do you think this is the way you show your faith? <laughs> you walk on the street like with a, an, a very tight shirt and the muscles are all puffed up like that because I've pushed some iron and then you have here and you're flexing your arms like that and the muscles going boom, 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 boom. And then you've got a rosary here and, and the cross here. I am a Christian, bro. Why you got a, you got a problem? I'm a Christian bro with a red belt karate. You got a problem? Relax. Christ is in your heart, not on your muscle. <laughs> he needs to live in your heart. How can you tell if you are hearing the enemy's voice or God's? It takes time. You need to live with the Lord. It takes time to get to know this. It's not uh, something I teach you. No, you need to live. Before, I wouldn't even know when I was very young, you know. I don't know if it was the Lord or Satan, I don't know. Now, I wouldn't even have a clue. <laughs> Just kidding. I pray. I pray to the Lord Jesus. We need to pray as well. It's not just only time, but we need to pray every day for the Lord to give me that protection of His. I need to be embraced by His grace, by His mercy, and by the blood which He shed on Calvary. I need to ask for His protection every single day, my beloved. But it takes time to get to know the Lord Jesus. It's like with every relationship. When you meet this person for the first time, you don't know much about them. But don't tell me you don't know them after 10 years. Come on, man. If you don't know them after 10 years, you've got a problem. <laughs> you better move on or they will move you out of the house. <laughs> so, but once you live a very long time with, you, with the person, you look at their face, you know exactly what they want. So you need to pick and choose the right moment to ask them for whatever you're asking them for. When you look at the face and it's paradise, go for it. When you look at the face and it's hell, don't go for it. So the husband wants to go out with his friends. The wife said, I'll kill you. My name is Ahmedina, I will I'll kill you. Right? <laughs> Ahmed, the guy, Ahmedina, the girl. So anyway, so he, he's tried it several times. You go out, either me or your friends, okay? Don't ever think you come back and you find me here. I will leave you forever. The moment I leave the door, the front door, that's it. Go to the bishop and get a divorce. So easy, man. So you look at the face. If it looks kind of, mm -hmm, there's going to be World War Three. Say, honey, I chose to stay at home. <laughs> In fact, I bought a popcorn machine so we can have some popcorn and watch a movie together. But when it's looking good and it's sunshine and no clouds in the sky, say, honey, I'm going out with my friends. I won't be late 10 hours only. She'll say to you, Habibi, God, it's all right. Don't worry. Because maybe she wants to get rid of you as well. She wants to have a break. So yeah, choose the time. But... The more you live with the person, the more you get to know the person. So the first time I encountered the Lord Jesus is not the same when I've been with him for the last 30 years. It's not. I was very immature. But now, I'm very mature. 
but it takes the Lord to tell you it's him or not. It's got to be him. But he teaches you on how he operates. Mm. I knew going to America, I was going to be, I was going to cop it. I knew that. I knew. I knew the attack was coming. I thank the Lord. It's all good. What time is it? You know, remember this. When you talk, when you speak about the Lord Jesus, when you preach about the Lord Jesus, when you walk in the footprints of the Lord Jesus by His grace and mercy, whatever people do to you, always love them and pray for them. Thank you very much. You try to hurt me. You try to do this character assassination by spreading things around the social media platforms. You know what? I love you, bro. God bless you. Believe me. God bless you. Because at the end, my dear friend, ask yourself this question. What does it benefit a man if he gains the whole world and at the end loses himself? We will sooner or later stand before the almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth and answer to him. What will I say when the Lord looks at me in the eyes and says, Why did you do this to Bishop Murray? Who gave you the permission to do this? What your answer is going to be? If you think you are a lawyer on earth, <laughs> you cannot be a lawyer in heaven. You need the only lawyer to stand and speak on your behalf before God the judge. You need Jesus, the perfect man. If he's not your lawyer, indeed, you're finished. But when this judge says to you, why did you do that? Do you think when you try to hurt my son, do you think I'm not going to come after you? Do you think? But you know what? Don't ever retaliate. Don't. If you believe in the Lord Jesus, love covers a lot of errors. If someone wants to hurt me, I will never ever hurt them back. Because this is not the way my only teacher taught me. He says, Pray for those who persecute you. Love those who hate you. Bless those who say whatever against you. Bless them. Lord, I will shut my mouth because you have spoken, Lord. Entrust everything in the Lord's capable hands and let him fight the battle for you. Let him fight the battle for you. Amen. Amen. Very good. So, be happy always, no matter what. Thank the Lord always, no matter what. No matter what. Pray for everyone. They love you, they hate you, they go against you, they try to ruin you. Pray for them. All good. Thank the Lord Jesus. Let's listen to another hymn. This is the only way, my beloveds, if you wish to make it to heaven, you need to surrender everything to the one and only Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is the only way. Lord, have mercy on your church. 
I'm begging you, Lord, because I do not know if I will be here tomorrow. But you are here today, tomorrow, and forever. The church is yours. You established it. You made it happen by, the, by your own blood, which you shed on Calvary. Lord, even though I'm a sinner and the greatest of all, but I love you. And I believe, and not only believe, I know, I know what kind of a heart you have. I beg you, Lord, have mercy on your church, on your beloved church. Have mercy on the entire world and give us more time. I believe the time is coming at a closure, but I'm asking you, Lord, give us more time. Touch the heart of every church leader from the highest to the lowest in rank. Touch the heart of every Christian. Touch the heart of every person on the face of this world. For you are God revealed in the flesh. You are the creator of everything and everyone that is visible and invisible. Lord Jesus, I am begging you for the sake and the intercession of your holy mother, for the sake and the intercession of all your saints and all your angels in heaven. Lord, for the love of your heavenly Father that sent you to be the Savior and the Redeemer of the world, for the sake of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of life, that whom he dwells in every Christian baptized in your most holy and precious name. Lord, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, Lord Jesus. Just be a little bit more patient. Give us more time, Lord. Lord, I'm asking you for every house, for every home that is broken, I'm asking you to heal that home. Lord, for every place where there is division, I'm asking you to bring your unity. Lord Jesus, for every soul that is distant from you, Lord Jesus, I'm begging you, bring that soul back because of your precious blood, you purchased every single human being with your precious blood for your sake, for the sake of your most holy and precious name, for the sake of your glory, for the sake of your blood, for the sake of your heavenly father, for the sake of the Holy Spirit, for the sake of your holy church. I beg you, Lord Jesus, I beg you, bring every soul that is distant, that has not known you yet, bring that soul back to you, Lord Jesus. I beg you, have mercy on us all sinners. And I am the greatest of all. Lord, your church is in turmoil. You know that. I am just saying it, but I believe and I know that you already know. But you said to me, I'm your son. So as that son, you gave me that privilege, yet I'm not worthy. It is your blood, your grace, your mercy, your love. In that, in your name, on, based on your holy word, which is your promise to all of us as a son, I'm asking you, Dad, have mercy on your church. Unite your church, Lord. Enough, enough of all these divisions. Enough of all, all this human dilemma enough of all this human bigotry and hatred and envy and jealousy and self-pride enough lord we cannot unite you need to unite us it's been more than 1600 years of agony the church is in division eastern orthodoxy oriental orthodoxy catholics protestants the church of the east we're sick and tired of it, Lord. Bring every heart back to you. Unite every heart to your holy, to your sacred heart, Lord Jesus. And I'm begging you, 
to bring the entire world to you. Use me, Lord, as your vessel. I know I'm not worthy. I know I am. I'm a piece of wreck from head to toe. But I know my Jesus is the perfect Lamb of God. I know my Jesus is the perfect God revealed in the flesh over 2,000 years ago. Lord, touch every heart. Bring every heart to you, Lord Jesus. And we're asking you for mercy and forgiveness. And just like we have offended you, yet when we came seeking your mercy and forgiveness, you forgave us. I am forgiving, Lord, those who have offended me and hurt me. And those who are still trying to hurt me, I forgive them, Lord Jesus. I forgive them for one reason, because you are my love. You are my God. You are my Father. You are my everything. Lord, it is you who taught me how to love, how to forgive, and how to move on. I love those who have gone against me. Because you taught me to do that. And not only say it, but live it. And you know that I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Those who tried to, to hurt me a few days ago, I am saying it with a loud voice before the whole entire world. My Jesus knows what the case is. I put my case in the hand of my Lord Jesus. I don't need to explain nothing, but I will say one thing. Because Jesus Christ is my heavenly master, teacher, brother, God, father, everything to me. Because he is the love of my life. I forgive you, my dear friend. I don't fear nothing. I don't fear no one. Because I have Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's all that matters. Whatever you do to me, to try to hurt me, to destroy me, I will love you. And I will pray for you. Lord, bring us back to you, Lord Jesus. Bring us back to you, Lord Jesus. Bring us back to you, Lord. My young, beautiful sons and daughters, don't let anyone take you away from Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Don't let anyone come and say, come on, let's go and do this and say that and go over there and come over here. Don't, don't, don't. Say, I belong to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm not coming, I'm not coming with you to take me to Satan. I'm not coming with you to go and do the wrong thing. I'm not coming anymore. Because Jesus is my Lord, my Savior. I belong to Him. I don't belong to the world. I don't belong definitely to Satan. I don't. I belong to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Always be close to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Love Him. Worship Him for He is God. Love Him because He is worthy of every drop of love we give Him. For there is no greater love than what Jesus has done for all of us on the cross on Calvary. And yet we were sinners. He died for us. Yet we were sinners. You may die for someone who is a saint, but you will never die for someone who is a sinner who has denied you and sold you with 30 pieces of silver and is still sinning, denying you every single day. Yet Jesus still loves you. You will never find this love. And this is the cry of this piece of wreck. I'm not talking about Christianity. I'm talking about Christ. I'm about Christ. Bring me your leader and I'll bring you my leader and let me see which one is the one. You cannot fault Jesus. For he is the perfect God, perfect man. You cannot fault his teaching. For in him everything is perfection. 
Everything's perfect. Everything. Whoever has hurt you, forgive. Whoever tried to put a trap and bring you down, forgive. Move on. Let go. Don't hold nothing in your heart against no one. Don't even waste your time on Satan. Move on. You need to focus on the Lord Jesus. Why are you wasting time talking about this person and talking about this Satan? Move on. Don't let this moment go by unless you have spent it with the Lord Jesus. Don't. Who cares people hate me? Who cares people go against me? Who cares people try to bring me down, try to destroy me? Who cares? Love them. Pray for them. Pray the Lord touches their heart. Because if it wasn't the Lord, I wouldn't have seen. We would have been all blind. It is the Lord who opened my eyes. Lord, just like the way you opened my eyes, open the eyes of those who have not seen you yet, heard you yet, tasted you yet, lived with you yet. Bring them, Lord. Don't be selfish. Pray for your worst enemy. Pray. Love them. Love them. Thank you, Lord, because they tried to hurt me. I thank, believe me, I thank you. I thank those people who were trying, who were trying to hurt this bishop. Believe you me, I love them from the bottom of my heart. And I am praying for them. But you know what? I really don't care. Because what you try to do will get you nowhere. But I'll pray for your salvation. I'll pray. I'll pray. Christianity is Christ, the King. Come to this, this person. And let me tell you one thing. The church I belong to believes that Christ is one unique person forever. Divinity and humanity united in one person. My church believes that Christ is one and one person only. There is not two persons. One and enough of this foolishness, of this ignorance enough. Enough. Christ is one divine, unique person forever. In Christ, this one unique person, divinity and humanity were united. The two natures united in this person. It's not that the divine got a person and the human side got another person. No. This is the faith and the belief of my church. It is the nature, the divine nature and the human nature. Both of them came and united in one person only. Hear this clearly into your heads. One person forever. And if this was not the belief of my church, I wouldn't have stayed one second in it. I would have taken these clothes off and denied it. But my church is holy, built on the rock who is Christ Jesus. Lord, have mercy on all of us. Have mercy, Lord. There is Catholics here. There is Orthodox here. And there's, I believe, maybe Protestants as well. Oh, oh. We should be careful. They're infectious. There is Eastern and Oriental Orthodox here. Oh, oh. there is Pope Cyril. Oh, be careful. He's on the altar. Oh, he's an Oriental Orthodox. 
What is he doing with the church of the East? We are doomed. We're gloomed. He's my sweetheart. Get a life, man. But these two saints there are the sons of Christ. They are his family. It is Christ who chooses who to put there. Not me. Who am I? Who am I to do such a thing? Can we open our eyes for God's sake? Open our hearts? It is Christ doing. Who is, this bishop is nothing. I cannot dare to do such a thing. To be in the presence of these holy men of God, I'm not worthy. I'm ignorant. I'm dumb. I'm blind. It is the Lord who brought his sons together. Just to say, enough is enough. Stop dividing my family. This is in heaven, they are sitting together, praising me together as one family. In heaven, there is no Catholics, there is no Orthodox, there is one thing the family of God, Christians, belonging to Christ. That's what it is. Don't think you're going to go to paradise and say, oh, a sign here, all Catholics this way. All Orthodox, oh, you, what are you, Eastern, Oriental? Oh, um, no, no, you go this way, this way, because we don't want you to fight in paradise. Well, get a life, man. What's this? Wake up. There is only Christ, and there is only the family of Christ. These names don't exist there. It's only exists here, man-made. We love you, Lord. If you haven't forgiven someone, forgive them today, this moment. And if you are having issues, leave them to the Lord. What's your problem? Put it in His capable hands. The doctor said you're dying. No, I don't care. Lord, you know, whatever you say. Whatever you say, Lord. Unless the Lord speaks, nothing's going to happen. With all love and respect. You see, you need to have faith. This person was on life support machine. They rang us and the doctors in Liverpool Hospital, I'll mention the hospital. In Liverpool Hospital said to the entire family, you come and farewell your brother, your son, your whatever member he was in the family. The doctors in Liverpool Hospital here in Sydney, yeah? They said, you come to the family and come and farewell him. He was in a coma, gone on a life support machine. The moment they switch it off, he was already declared clinically dead by the doctors in Liverpool Hospital. And I don't think the doctors in Liverpool Hospital are that ignorant. I don't think so. He was declared dead. But when the Lord, when the Lord wants something, the other day came and said hello to us. Perfectly fine. Because it's the Lord. It's the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Love the Lord. And let the Lord guide your steps. Amen. Um, carols by candlelight is tomorrow. Whoa. So we shall see you. It's going to start from 4 p.m. Uh, mom and dads with kids, families, please do come. From 4 p.m. there will be a lot of uh, activities for the children, food, drinks. Well, let's come and join in the love of Christ. So it's tomorrow at 4 p.m. At 6.30 p.m. exactly, the, the hymns will start with our beautiful choirs. We have the kids' choir as well. They're going to sing for us, these little beautiful angels. It's going to be hymns in English, in Arabic, and in Assyrian. So please do join us tomorrow. It starts from 4 p.m. And then at 6.30 p.m. Uh, the uh, Christmas carol hymns will commence. Parents and adults will come into the church. The children will be looked after the entire time. So you don't need to worry about that, mom and dad. And uh, let us enjoy this moment in this festive season of the nativity of, of the Messiah, the King of kings and the Lord of all lords. The birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
So it's tomorrow. I shall see you tomorrow, God willing. Um, the church calendar is available if you'd like to obtain a copy. Of course, this, uh, this calendar belongs to this church, so it may be different to the church you go to slightly. But if you'd like to know all the, um, the dates, the occasions, the festive seasons for 2024, please obtain a copy of that calendar. You'll have the entire year there at your fingertip available. Um, the children and the family sponsorship is going really well. We thank the Lord Jesus. It's on the increase as we speak. Uh, and we thank the Lord has blessed this honestly immensely, immensely, and we thank the Lord for that. And by the way, we hit 1.3 billion views on TikTok. Go, baby! You know, but I'll say this I know I've spoken too long. I'm really sorry. So I've missed you guys. It's been 10 days. Believe you me, it worries me not one bit, even if it's 10 billion views. One thing I only look for. And this is the Lord's grace. As long as His name is glorified, His holy name. Who cares? Who cares? They say, oh, Bishop. And some people get a bit kind of intimidated and jealous and all this. Oh, why is he going here? And, and that, by the way, that interview with Patrick with David. Uh, how, how, how many of you know Patrick with David? Show of hands. Yeah, that's all right. Good. Very good. I'm sitting in that studio. And I'm still saying, what's going on? What am I doing here? Man, I like to mow the lawn, dig a ground and plant a tree or something. Enjoy, you know, it's simple. You see me other times, right? I'm in a different outfit, pull up the sleeve, mate, and start working. I love, you know, gardening and all that. But sitting in there, it was just, uh, I don't know, it was, to me, what is this? As long as you, Lord, I don't know, whatever, whatever. But it's, it's beautiful, you know, people come to you and say, um, thank you for the preaching, uh, you've touched my heart, changed my, my life. This person said, I, I'm totally changed now by listening to these preachings. Now, all glory, all glory to the one and only, the love of my life, Jesus. So be happy for the Lord. Don't ever say, oh, look at me what I've done. Don't ever say that. Whatever happens, it's the Lord, not you. Give it all back to the Lord. Let's stand for the finale prayer. God bless you. Oh, I forgot something. No, just kidding. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. Until next Friday, go in peace. The peace of Christ be with you always, my beloveds. God bless.